In this video, we're gonna answer some common questions that have been asked in the Facebook group. If you haven't joined that yet, a link to it is down below this video. The very first question is, why invest in video equipment like cameras, lights, and encoders? The reason it's important to invest in the proper equipment is because one, it can make your workflow easier, and two, it also makes a better product, a better experience for the people that are watching your videos or your live streams. And that is extremely important, especially if you're uploading video content or you're live streaming for your business. For example, if you're production quality is low, it might give a bad impression of your business and maybe make you look unprofessional. Or if you are streaming for personal reasons, and in that particular case, it might take away from your talents. So in that case, investing in the proper equipment is as much about you as it is the people that are consuming your content. Why isn't my phone good enough when I want to go live outside? In most cases, streaming from your phone will get the job done. However, if you're relying on your phone, you're relying on one internet connection and you're relying on the optics inside of the phone itself. If you're using something like the Live View Solo, you'll be bonding multiple signals together to make sure that you have a great looking and stable stream. And you can use any camera with an HDMI output to make sure that you have the best looking stream possible. The next question is, what live streaming gear is necessary for e-gaming streams? Gaming streams are similar to any other type of live streams. The only difference being, if you're gaming, you're also wanting to record what's on your screen. That can be on your phone, or that can be on your computer, or even on your PlayStation or Xbox. You can do this on your phone using the Streamlabs mobile app. It's available for Android and iPhone. You can also do it on a computer using Streamlabs OBS, which is actually built primarily for gamers. And if you want to take the whole thing up a notch, let's say that you have a limited connection to where your internet speed isn't that great. Well, one of the things that you can do also is you can connect your normal internet to a LiveView Solo, and then you can also use the cellular bonding technology to where you're using the LiveView Solo to actually push your stream up. So for that, you would take a laptop, for example, that would have an HDMI out. You would plug that into to the live view solo and then you're good to go. And of course, just like any other stream, make sure that if you are doing gaming videos that you're using a headset of some kind with a microphone on it or some type of additional microphone to make sure that you're picking up your voice clearly. And the reason this is important is because you're a gamer. You know how important those reactions are. My channel is in English, but my native language is Dutch and some of my followers are Dutch. How can I cater to both audiences on one channel? You're probably not gonna like this answer, but I would recommend that you do not combine both languages on the same channel. And the reason for that is because I'm an English speaker. If I go to your YouTube channel and I watch one video and then I go to your channel page to see what else you have to offer and I hit one of the Dutch videos, because it's in another language, I'm not gonna stick around, which means I'm not gonna subscribe to your channel, which means that I'm not gonna come back and watch more of your content. In reality, there's pretty much endless choices for content that people can watch. So making people have to sift through your content in order to find the language that they speak is a pretty bad decision when it comes to putting content out onto YouTube. Other places where this is going to be a disadvantage for you are, let's say that you publish a new video. Well, if a notification goes out into somebody's email box that, and they're coming into a Dutch video, for example, or vice versa, and they click on that email notification, they come in to watch your video, it's in another language, they're gonna bail on the video, which is gonna hurt your audience retention, which is gonna tell YouTube that people are not into that content. And you have the same exact situation when your video is shown on home pages and in YouTube's recommendation features. Basically, when people come to that video and it's not in the language they speak, they're gonna be a lot less likely to watch that video for any duration of time. And that sends really bad signals to YouTube, basically saying that it's a low performing video in terms of how people are responding to it. And because of that, YouTube will be less likely to show it to more people. The Live View Solo seems like a great solution for outdoor live streaming. How can I take advantage of its benefits indoors? Indoors, you have the advantage to be able to connect it directly to your home internet connection, which is gonna make your signal even better. In addition to that, you can still connect a camera to it so you don't have to get any additional adapters or graphic cards for your computer. So depending on what it is that you're actually trying to do, the Live View Solo can actually save you a ton of money from computer upgrades. What are your top tips for building an audience using live streaming? My biggest recommendation is to focus Focus all of your efforts on making sure that you're adding some type of value. And we all interpret value in different ways, but making sure that you're adding some type of real value to the people that are participating in your live streams. The idea here is to make sure that people feel like they're getting something out of participating in your live stream. For example, maybe they leave and they feel inspired or motivated to do something. Maybe they learn something new. But the idea is basically just to make sure that you're adding value to them that they wanna keep coming back for. The more you focus on the value that you're adding to the people that are watching watching your live streams, the bigger your audience is going to become. In addition to that, try to get them as involved as possible. Ask questions, try to get some interaction going. Ask them to share your live stream from time to time. Even small things like, hey, 
Give me a hashtag new if you're just joining the live stream. Just that little bit of engagement helps people go from sitting back, kind of fading out, a little bit bored from the live stream maybe, or just not fully engaged, to actually sitting up and actively participating in what it is that you're doing. Other things that you can do in terms of asking people where they're from and things like that, this can also help get the chat involved in itself so that it becomes its own show within the show that you're putting out. So the people that are interacting in the chat are getting to know each other as well, which adds additional value to what it is that you are doing. When it comes to replaying the streams, what is the best way to do that and how soon after your stream ends? This is a great question. Personally, I make my live streams available almost immediately after the stream is complete. And the reason that I do this is because I'm extremely audience focused. And because I'm audience focused, I want the people that were not able to participate in the stream to be able to watch it afterwards. Most platforms will keep your live streams by default. Some are a little bit more difficult to actually find those live streams afterwards. So in that particular case, let's say that you're streaming on Facebook where it's a little bit more difficult. Something that you might wanna do is you might wanna have an email list that you put together that people can subscribe to so that you can send out a link to your live stream there. Or at the very least, create a Facebook group or Facebook page to where you can consistently drop those live stream replays in there. If you're on YouTube, all of this is default. You just have to make sure that your settings are set properly inside of YouTube to allow that replay to publish. And if it's currently set on private, you can actually go back in after the stream, after you set up your tags and all that, and you can go back in, re-optimize the metadata for the video, and then publish that video by changing it to public. How do you decide which platform you wanna to stream to, and do you use other platforms to promote your streams? You wanna stream where your audience is. So if you have an audience on YouTube, stream there. If you have an audience on Facebook, stream there. If you have an audience on Twitch or another platform, Mixer or something, Thing, go ahead and stream there. But the idea is to stream where you're gonna get some interaction on your live stream because you don't wanna put up live streams that are not gonna have anybody watch the live stream. Now, if you don't have an audience anywhere, then in that particular case, I would go on the platform that you enjoy the most, the one that you frequent the most, because on any platform, a great way to build an initial audience is just by interacting in the community already. So if you already are on Facebook all the time, you're interacting in groups and things like that, then in that case, Facebook might be a great fit for you. But if you're on YouTube a lot, then in that case, I would recommend YouTube. So whatever platform you enjoy the most or whichever platform that you think your audience, your future audience is going to be on or is already on and you just wanna get yourself in front of them, then in that particular particular case, then go ahead and stream on that platform. The next question is, why isn't my computer or webcam and home internet good enough? In all honesty, if it's not good enough, your choices are to upgrade your internet connection, upgrade your computer, or go with something like the LiveView Solo that's gonna take away those limitations. Because live streaming, because you're pushing up so much data, live streaming can be taxing on your internet connection, and it can also be very taxing on your computer, especially if you're using an encoder to push your stream up. For the live show that I do with my brother D, we upload through a 20 megabyte upload internet connection, and that seems to do the trick for us. Now I've streamed from 10 megabytes, and to be honest with you, the quality wasn't as good. However, the 20 megabytes definitely does get the job done for us. Now, with that said, we are in the process now of upgrading to fiber. So at the end of the day, you want to get the fastest internet that you can afford, because if you have a strong internet connection, that's also going to allow you to make a bigger frame size, make a higher bit rate and all that, which is really important when it comes to live streaming. And like we were talking about at the beginning of this video, creating a better user experience. If any of your questions did not make this list, feel free to head over to the Facebook group. Again, a link to that is going to be on this page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.